Today's episode of The Dan Cave is brought to you by the Society of Virtue. Not every superhero manages to achieve the same level of fame as Batman or Wonder Woman or Captain America, but that doesn't mean they're not worth your while. Take, for example, The Society of Virtue, the hilarious YouTube series that features all manner of heroes you've never heard of, but offers incredible insights into the comics that we know and love. And they are just the tip of the iceberg. And on today's episode of The Dan Cave, we're gonna dive deep into superhero history, talk about these forgotten spandex-clad vigilantes that are worth unearthing. Olga Mesmer. Before there was Superman, there was Olga Mesmer, the girl with the X-ray eyes, who as you might intuit had X-ray vision. She also had super strength because her mad scientist father exposed her to radiation like dads do, and her mom was from Venus but also ruled an underground kingdom which she was deposed from because comics. Olga sadly only lasted from August 1937 to October 1938, but she starred in what might be the single greatest name for a comic ever. Spicy mystery stories. <laughs> Spicy. Honestly though, she was pretty rad. She laid the smack down on her creepy legal guardian when he got too handsy. She saved a man's life by giving him some of her super blood. And she even wound up preventing an interplanetary war. All in a little over a year. What have you done in a little over a year? Is it anything close to this? No, I didn't think so, Becky. The Fightin' Hobo. While the fighting hobo might not have been the first vagrant vigilante, he was the only one named Butch Brogan, and whose obsession was a copy of Hamlet he found in the city dump that led to an irrepressible urge to fight crime. You know, plays within a play, weird thing. His one and only adventure in 1942's USA Comics number no. five saw Butch rescuing a stolen dog, bopping the kidnapper on the nose and getting a sweet reward and a kiss on the cheek for his troubles. He was never heard from again, but if you close your eyes and rub trash on a copy of Hamlet three times, Legend has it that he just might appear. But probably not, you just ruined your book. The Blonde Phantom. Now before there was Black Widow, Marvel Comics' premier femme fatale was Louise Grant. A secretary to a private investigator by day and a crime fighter adept in martial arts marksmanship and falling off a seemingly impossibly slinky dress by night. She was the Blonde Phantom and she kicked ass without the aid of any superpowers apart from a superior sense of intuition. While she came back a couple of times over the years, most notably to help She-Hulk defeat the Stiltman and then weirdly, date her dad, she never quite caught on in a major way, which is a damn shame. Because with Agent Carter out of the picture in the MCU, a noir-style lady detective story would be the perfect addition to Marvel's movies. Stardust the Super Wizard. No, Stardust the Super Wizard isn't just what I have written on my business cards. It's also the name of a truly bonkers golden age hero. Created by Fletcher Hanks in 1939, Stardust the Super Wizard is an alien and I quote, whose vast knowledge of interplanetary science has made him the most remarkable man that ever lived, end quote. Living on his private star, he monitors crime across the galaxy and has a no-nonsense approach to fighting evil. For example, he turned a mad scientist named Chaos into a worm, then fed him to a giant army of vultures from Venus that Chaos sought to unleash upon Earth. And he hurled another scientist named Demon into a tidal wave, killing him, and then used the guy's disintegrating ray to destroy his body as well. Long story short, don't be a scientist around Stardust the Super Wizard, Kyle. Jill Trent, science sleuth. Now, speaking of science, there's a few characters I wish would make a comeback, but none more so than Jill Trent, science sleuth. Using her elite detective skills and scientific smarts, Jill kicked ass, took names, and used all manner of awesome inventions like indestructible cloth and x-ray glasses to save the day. Plus, Jill Trent may have made comic book history. Not only did Jill solve crime with her best friend Daisy Smythe, the two frequently shared a bed together, which suggests to some that she may have been the first queer hero in comic book history. So please, just give her a Netflix original series and bring Jill back, damn it. I mean, clearly the world's in dire need of scientific sleuthing. And those are some of the greatest, wildest, and weirdest superheroes that time forgot. But which is your favorite? What would you add to this list? Let us know in the comments below and give me an obscure thumbs up while you're there. Oh, haven't seen this one before. Now be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's episode about the story of a teenage girl growing up in Sacramento in the early 2000s who meets an actor having a mental breakdown because he once played a superhero who may or may not have been Charles Dickens and Lady Birdman who invented Christmas. Until next time, keep on digging. Special thanks to the Society of Virtue for sponsoring today's episode. 
What is the Society of Virtue? Well, they're not just the greatest superheroes in all of Megalopolis, Bill. They're also a prism through which creator Ian SBF masterfully skewers the superhero genre, using whip-smart writing, biting satire, and ironic observation. Meet characters like the Patriot Lieutenant and his shield that is literally a target, or the Majestic, a superhero whose enemies actually want to be spanked by her. And if you dig cult classic comedies like The Venture Brothers and Robot Chicken, then you need to subscribe to the Society of Virtue and get a dose of hilarious heroics every Tuesday. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At HallieS86 asks, based on costumes only, what superhero would you want to be? Comics slash cartoons only, as the movie costumes are too blah. Costume does not give you powers, i.e. Iron Man suit. Okay, well, Hallie, thank you for your very specific question. I'd probably go with uh, Gambit's costume because it looks like a perfect blend of style and comfort. Because not only do you have those cool silver boots and a form-fitted pink breastplate, but you get a bitchin' trench coat and a balaclava to keep your head toasty. It's like you're being swaddled by comfort. And it comes with playing cards so you never get bored. But tell me, what superhero costume would you want to have? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.